Alright, welcome back to Decrypt the Tech and our continuing coverage of ASUS's Republic of Gamers Rampage 4 Gene. Alright, what you're seeing here is you're actually seeing the easy mode of the UEFI BIOS inside this board. Normally when you boot into, boot into the BIOS, you're going to be taken to the advanced mode. However, it does have an easy mode. It's easy to get to. Uh, you just click on the exit and one of the options is ASUS Easy Mode. And it's going to take you to this screen. Some people like this over the overbooting directly into the advanced mode because it gives you a quick overview of what's going on with your board. Um, you have a few options here, like you can change your boot options, you can change the boot menu, uh, F8. You can also hit F3, and it's going to pull up your shortcuts. It's going to take you into the advanced mode and take you directly to each one, any one of these. So if we wanted to go ahead and we wanted to hit Digi Power Control, it's going to take us directly into that, that advanced mode and take us straight there. Of course, if we hit back, we're going to be what you would normally see when you boot into the BIOS. Again, this is the UEFI BIOS that ASUS has put together. I believe it's their fourth generation of UEFI BIOS, and it's very smooth. As you can see, scrolling with the mouse wheel just moves you directly through things, clicking on them. Uh, you have manual entry fields, all of that. Just works a lot easier. Um, one of the nice features in the Gene series and in the Rampage series is that you're going to have these options to load different profiles. You have your OC profile, gamers profile, extreme OC profile with low current, low, high current. You click on one of those, it's going to set up those overclocks for you automatically. Um, if you want to run the low current, that's probably for more air cooling, water cooling, things like that. The high current is going to be for your more advanced cooling. Uh, we did tinker around with these and got some interesting results. Uh, for our testing though, we ran manual overclocking. What you're seeing is the results of our manual overclock. We went with a 101 uh, megahertz B clock frequency and a 46 multiplier. You know, you have your other options here, your CPU strap, you can set this just like we showed you in the AI Suite tools. Uh, you can set that here as well. So we left ours set to auto. And of course you have your other options, your memory frequency can be set to manual, you have your clock gen filter, extreme tweaking which we set up, and then you have different items here such as your CPU performance settings, it's going to allow you to adjust different things, your power limit controls, your turbo uh, mode parameters, all of that. You have your DRAM timing controls. You can load different profiles for different types of memory. As your 4x4 Hynix, um, you know you just need to know exactly what the chips are in your memory in order to get those profiles to work. You have your DigiPlus power controls, which we started on when we first got here. You can see all of these settings, your boot up voltage, all of those things. This boot up voltage was actually set by the system when we were playing around with AutoTune. So that's going to get this, the uh, CPU to boot up, but then it's going to, to bounce back to our standard uh, voltage that we have set. And we'll show you that down here of 1.45. It didn't affect performance, doesn't seem to affect temperatures or anything like that. So again, you know, typical in ASUS motherboards, you have a lot of settings that allow you to get some fine tuning on your um, voltages as well as other settings in here, you can see your memory tweakers paradise. It's going to allow you to get in here and adjust that memory so that it operates at the frequency and the speeds that you want without uh, sacrificing the performance and you know also the scale, uh, not really scalability, but um, stability of that product. All right, so that covers everything here in the extreme tweaker. Of course, the main is an overview of what you've got. Um, you can see our memory frequency. You can see the amount of memory that we have in the system. All of that CPU. It's just a broad overview. You have options for security. Um, of course, under advanced, these are some advanced settings, but these are also settings that you can get to through the rest of the board. Uh, for example, here are your advanced CPU settings. You, know, you can turn on, on or off the thermal monitor, hyper threading, all of these. And sometimes these are nice to get additional speed. We've seen where overclockers will drop down the number of active cores down to two or even down to one so that they can get the most out of the processor. When you start ex uh, adding in extra cores, any timing differences between those cores can cause your overclock to fail. We always leave all six cores enabled as well as hyper-threading just to make sure that we cover the stability of the board in addition to covering the stability of the CPU. So you have some power management controls here as well. The CPU C1E support we have disabled to get the most out of the, out of the clock. You have your different monitors, any surge support, voltage monitor, temperature monitor, this is all going to push through here, fan speed monitors, and of course you have your fan speed controls. These are your Q fan controls. We have these turned off, again, because of our water cooling, but ASUS has always had nice um, options for these. And you can set your CPU limits, you can change the fan profile to standard, turbo, manual, any of those. Manual is one of our favorite ones because it allows you to actually set the threshold and the performance that the fan is going to get. But uh, again, for 
our purposes, we leave that disabled just so we make sure that we get the most out of our water cooling that we have here. Of course, on your boot, you have your different boot options. You can change the boot up uh, system. This is when you hit the, uh, near the F8 key while it's booting. It's going to give you a list of, of what you want to boot from first. You can turn them on, off. These are your first options and all of that, your boot option priorities. They're pretty much typical from what you're seeing. Now when you do your setup mode, for those of you that actually want to boot into easy mode normally, you go to your boot option screen, setup mode, hit easy mode. Every time you boot into the BIOS, you're going to be greeted with that easy mode screen. For some people, this is great. For others, they're going to want to see that advanced mode first because, well, that's where they're going anyway. And you have your tools here. You can turn on or off that Supreme FX3 lighting LED. That's the physical lighting that shows the physical PCB separation between the audio components and the rest of the motherboard. If you want to turn that off for whatever reason you can, ASUS does give you that option. You have your go button files. It's going to allow you to adjust memory frequency so that you can push that go button. It will automatically set that. Your different OC profiles. You can set these up to save whatever you want here. And then, of course, your SPD information, which is going to show you what your DIMMs are capable of. And we've talked about this before, the difference between what memory is defaulted to or its JDEC specification versus its XMP or extended memory profile. Here you can see that the memory is 1333, the XMP is 1600. It's the same for any memory that's labeled. If they sell it as 2400 megahertz memory, 99% of the time, um, at least until later this year, that JDEC spec is still going to be 1333. You drop it in, it's going to run at 1333 until you enable the XMP or until you change those settings to match that frequency that it's rated to. We have some 2400 megahertz memory here. If we dropped it in this board right now and booted it up, it would still be at 1333 because we haven't set it to 2400 megahertz. All right, that covers the majority of what you got in the BIOS, at least those you know, features that you can see here. We also have some other features here. You have a great way of uh, returning immediately to previous values. Let's say you do some settings and you want to change them. You change your mind, want to go back, you just hit F2. Of course, we mentioned that you have your F3. That's going to take you through any of your shortcuts. Just click on these and it takes you directly there. Voltage monitor, whatever. You have an option for optimized default. Just hit F5 if you ever want to do that. You have your ratio boost from ASUS, which is going to allow you to boost the CPU ratio. You have your, uh, you know, F10 has always been the save, and so you save the BIOS and then you reboot the system. And then, of course, you have print screen, which we've talked about on uh, numerous occasions. As long as you have a FAT32 formatted USB key, you can throw it in here and take direct print screens of the BIOS and save those to that key. They are saved as bitmaps, so they're pretty large, uh, right around 2 megs. So if you're planning on sending this to a friend, you, know, you might want to put it in something that would transfer it from a, from a bitmap over to a uh, JPEG. And that wraps up our coverage with the uh, UEFI BIOS on the Rampage 4 Gene. Again, if you click on the link below, it'll take you to the rest of the performance uh, review where you'll actually see a video of the AI Suite 2 tools. But it'll also give you all of the performance information. You'll see how the board ran at stock speeds compared to how it ran at overclock speeds. And again, compared to other boards in the X79 class. We'll give you information on, on where we feel this board is going, where some changes might need to be made on ASUS's part, especially in the BIOS. And in the long run, what the value of the board is. So as always, if you like this video, be sure to click on the like button. Make sure you share it with your friends. And be sure to subscribe to stay up to date with the news and reviews we have for you.